I wanted to know because of I think we're going to wrap up soon. Like, what are your thoughts on intersectionality in the future? You know, like, just let me know your final thoughts in that. Like, just the future of like intersectionality with this intergenerational community, but also like, at what point are we elders? I think there isn't like an induction ceremony or anything. <laughs> it's just like a role that you take on. I think I had that experience, especially when I moved to the Habit, and I like you know formed a really great relationship with Migana. And one day she just called me her daughter, and it felt really right. And I don't know. It's just I think it's just something where you meet someone, and it feels like I love you, and I see you, and I want you to grow and evolve. And that's when you know that you're there for them and there'll be many more other people. And even when you are an elder, I think you still have elders. So it's not like a thing of like, oh, it's like I'm no longer a young person and I no longer, or like not a young person, but I am no longer have people that are there to hold space for me. Um, I think we all just hold each other in different ways and it just depends on where we are in life and what we can also give, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. What about you, Megan? Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Mia, what you said about um, even as elders, we have elders. I have some amazing elders. They're pretty reclusive these days, but you might see them come out wearing something completely fabulous for Mardi Gras, and they're there for half an hour, and you know they spent six weeks making this outfit, and then they go home again. <laughs> so you've got to be really quick. But, That's um, already me. Yes, <laughs> they, they, they are definitely there. Um, and as to when you become an elder, well, when I got Joy's email inviting me to this, I was like, oh, I was today years old when I realised I was a queer elder, but <laughs> I suppose I have to grudgingly, grudgingly accept that mantle because I was, I was looking at my photos and I sent Joy a picture of myself at a rally agitating for homosexual law reform, they called it in those days, in the 80s. And I was like, mm, I guess that was a long time ago. <laughs> Love, thank you, Estelle. I think like eldership within community at least is not something that you kind of pursue. It's something that's granted to you. Like it is it is a it is a privilege to be seen as someone as an elder. And I think like most of our queer old people would much rather like auntie or uncle because it sounds younger to them and it keeps them youthful. Yeah, but I think like in the future, I don't know, and I think that really excites me. It's like so much already has happened in the last year that I was like, how did this happen right now? that like, I get so afraid that we could go backwards at any point. But I'm also really excited to see what the internet is giving in terms of younger people having autonomy, because that's really exciting and really important. And not something that I think even I had as a young person, because I've just moved out of that like 24 to 25. So I don't think I can class myself as a young person anymore. I don't think, please tell me that I'm a young person. So I feel young again. Um, thank you. But yeah, it's it's super exciting. And I think that I don't view it like we're going downhill. Like I also don't know what queerness will look like in 30 years when, you know, like we're back in this exact spot talking about what this looked like 30 years ago. And yeah, I'm just super excited and hopeful that the future is intersectional. And if it's not, then like, I feel like my generation fucked up somewhere along the way. Oh my God, love. And then Matt? I, I have like, people that I call mum and dad who are like 15 years younger than me. <laughs> so I don't think it's necessarily an age thing. I just think it's like suddenly someone is offering something that is like acknowledging intersections and holding space and providing like a framework for people to feel safe in. And like that can be anybody at any age. Like I think that I have so many friends who are so younger than me and so wiser. So yeah, I, I don't know if it's, I think it is definitely something that you are bestowed with and not something that you, you work towards or call yourself. Yeah. What about, are you excited for the future? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. Um, yeah, I, I think that I, I have a 14 year old son and he's adamantly not into social media. And I'm like, I know you, you really perform a lot of the things that I, we talk about all the time and like I mouth off at him all the time about all the shit I'm un unhappy with. But it, I think that there might be a point where 
and I think that this might actually just be forced upon everybody, is that everyone actually has to just go, who's standing next to me? How can we build a resilient community? And let's get it together and do it in real life. Uh, I think that, like, yes, um, social media and the internet is really important, but literally, if, you're, if you have to deal with your survival right there and then, the only people that are going to help are the community that you're building around you. So uh, exactly. that's what I think about the future. <laughs> Well, that brings us to the end. We could go like all gays can, just talk a storm about this. I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. But thank you, all of you, Mia, Megan, Estelle and Matt, for this beautiful Dalanoa. Thank you.